So let me deal with these two named demons. Uh, the first is Baal and the second is Astro. We'll speak of them throughout the sermon series, but let me just get you introduced to them. In Deuteronomy 7 and 12, let me give you the backdrop of Judges, by the way. Um, so there was a man named Abraham. God spoke to him, said, leave your mother and father. I'm gonna give you a land. Uh, I'm gonna give you a son. Your son will lead to a nation. That's the nation of Israel in the promised land. They live there, it belongs to them. Then there was a famine. So in the days of a man named Joseph, at the end of the book of Genesis, God's people go to Egypt um, for a time so that they can survive the famine. This lasts over 400 years. Eventually, God's people are enslaved by a demonic, horrific uh, counterfeit of Jesus Christ named Pharaoh. God then delivers, his people cry out to him and God hears and answers their cry and their prayer. And so he raises up a deliverer named Moses, who is a judge. He's literally a judge. He's the beginning of the judges. And then he does supernatural signs and wonders to deliver God's people into freedom. For 40 years, they're wandering around the wilderness, sinning, complaining, rebelling, and God's trying to teach them to trust him, but they keep resisting him. Eventually that generation dies in the wilderness on the threshold of the promised land. And it is the next generation led by Joshua who brings them into the promised land. Now the problem is they've not been there for over 400 years. So that land is now occupied by their enemies and their adversaries, the Canaanites, the Amorites. You're gonna read about all the ites. The ites are all the bad guys in the book of Judges. And so what God tells them in Deuteronomy, particularly in chapter seven and chapter 12, when you get there, either displace everyone or destroy everyone. These people are evil and demonic. They are the counterfeit of being filled with the spirit. They're filled with Satan. They either need to leave or they need to leave this world. This is prophesied repeatedly by God in Deuteronomy. I've got all of this, by the way, in the study guide, if you wanna look it up for yourself. What happens is they enter into the promised land, but they don't do what God said. They let all the enemies stay there. They let all the demonic counterfeit religions continue to exist. They allowed all the cultural corruption and the sexual perversion to continue. And rather than displacing or destroying their enemies, they enslave them. They use them for profit and gain. And what, what this allowed was the worship of this demon god Baal, which was a chief a Canaanite deity, to continue to be worshiped in Israel. Baal is the anti-God. When the people of God turn from God, they turn to Baal. And Baal um, is literally the highest ranking demon in the unseen realm. He works directly for Satan himself. His name is referred to as master or Lord or owner. When demons are named, he is almost always named first because he is of highest rank. As you read Judges, you're going to see continually that when the people turn from God, they turn to Baal. In addition, you will hear of the Baals, plural. The Baals are other demons that work under Baal. We don't know their name, but they have what would be the equivalent of a family name. The Baals would be a family of demons that are working together. Just like your family and my family, we have a last name and that speaks of everyone who's a member of that extended family. Those are the Baals. They're all the lesser, lower ranking demons. In addition, as you read Judges, you will hear the word Baal and then a place. It'll be a city or a town or a geographic region. And that means that there is a Baal that has jurisdiction and territorial authority over that place and those people. These demons still exist today. So there is a Baal Seattle, there is a Baal San Francisco, there is a Baal Washington DC, there is a Baal Chicago, there is for sure a, a Baal Phoenix, there, there is a Baal London. And if you wanna know why it's so hard in Philadelphia, uh, because there's a Baal Philadelphia. And this is why, just let me verbal process for a moment. This is why, you can get new political leadership, but if you don't get new spiritual leadership, nothing changes in the culture. This is why when we put our hope in elections, we're being naive. 
Because if a demon is working through one person and we replace them and the demon works through the next person, we have changed people, but not demons, we've made no progress. And there are places that have oppression and there is a demonic spirit that has jurisdictional territorial authority and it imposes a culture on people. That's why certain places are, why is, why, is that a, why is that a place that is so perverted? Why is that a place that is so addicted? Why is that a place that has so much mental health? Why is that place so dangerous and violent? There is a spirit. There is a spirit that has been tolerated and as a result has dominated those people. Furthermore, um, Baal is the God of prosperity and fertility and wealth and comfort and pleasure and success. You would worship Baal if you wanted to succeed and be affluent and live a lavish lifestyle. Baal is typified as a bull. Another word for Baal is bull. And when God's people, perhaps the most famous Baal in the Bible is in the book of Exodus, God delivered his people They got together and they created a golden calf and they worshiped it. A calf is a baby bull. They were worshiping Baal. And see what happens is we read the Bible and we think those people are primitive. Thankfully we've moved beyond that sort of primitive thinking. Thankfully we don't worship a Baal or bull. Yes, we do. This is right next to the New York Stock Exchange. If if we were Hebrews, from the Old Testament, we would say, well, there's Baal, the golden bull. And we worship him because we want a bull or Baal market. A bull or Baal market is a thriving market. What I'm telling you is this, we're dealing with new days, but old demons. I've said this for a long time, that when you see the same thing happening from one culture to the next and one generation to the next and one nation to the next, if the people change and things don't, that means that the spirit working through them is the same. 